Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct news. It's Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. As you can see from the background, I am not yet in my studio because where the studio is has had the entire uh, basement, just about everything else, ripped up. And uh, the, the adjoining bathroom to the studio has been ripped out. So we'll be doing most of the show today just as screen share. We'll be back at the studio before long. It doesn't matter. Screen share lets you see what I'm seeing and prevents you from thinking that I made it up or whatever it is that people think. Um, this is interesting. I'm going to get to the full Brexit news. It's brought to you by Seacrest Motel. I'm going to go ahead and get to that. But I wanted to do this first because a lot of people are already sick of the Brexit and other people want to know exactly what's going on. So I wanted to get to this first. And if you've tuned in for the Brexit, I shall not lead you astray. Uh, this is New American gun registry loving Obama's security advisor refused to record another Muslim. Now, they, they should have changed what they called this from um, the title I just read you to fellow Muslim won't stop fellow Muslim even if he thinks he might be a terrorist. Um, wouldn't you think it's a problem if, um, let's say, a, a Christian was to bomb an abortion clinic and the Christian FBI agent was not going to report on who it might be or not going to record the individual because, of course, he's a Christian. No, you don't see that happening. That's that's probably going to get you sent to prison. And uh, as a Christian, I still wouldn't want to see that happen. That's not my point. How is it that Muslim gets a pass on everything? I should say Islam. How does this happen? A Muslim doesn't record another Muslim. Then a Muslim shouldn't have a damn job, said Gamal al bil Hafiz, who should not have a job. Now, this might not have been noteworthy except for the fact that Adel Hafiz is an FBI agent at the time, and he was refusing to do his duty, which at that moment involved taping a Muslim suspect. This happened in 2002. But uh, now the Cairo-born Abel Fahiz has moved on to bigger and perhaps better things. <coughs> He's a Homeland Security Advisor for Barack Obama. So while recording a single Muslim is a problem for him, putting every single American firearm owner on a gun registry that he fancies is a good idea. So let's see, you should not report on other Muslims who may be harming somebody. But it's okay to report on the vast majority of gun owners who are harming absolutely no one. This is the way that uh, this, this idiot's thinking. And of course, Barack Obama uh, promotes it. Former FBI counterterrorism agent says lawmakers could make mass murders less likely. What we need to do is keep the ownership of guns known to the government. Yeah, that worked well in Nazi Germany. Um, but he sh they, he's saying the terrorists in Orlando shouldn't have been able to buy a gun legally. Well, if other people had been al allowed to actually defend themselves, then this probably wouldn't have happened. We heard this in the parachuting with the Eagles of Death Metal member saying that this absolutely could have prevented by a few people who had a gun there. Now, do I think they need to be gun-free zones at concerts? No. Um, am I saying it's a good idea if you're going to jump in the mosh pit like I do to have a gun on your waist? Probably not. But the vast majority of people at concerts do not go in pits. It would be a good idea to have people who are not who are going to be responsible gun owners. I'm pretty sure if you're a responsible gun owner, you know not to bring a gun into a mosh pit. So it doesn't even you don't even really need to say it. It says responding to this, PJ Media notes remarkably that Al B Hafiz admits that the various terror watch lists and no-fly lists are useless. So he's not just toying around. Moments after suggesting another list, he doesn't explain how the National Gun Registry, which is yet another government list targeting millions of law-abiding citizens, would prevent the attack. In other words, this individual was already on a list. This wasn't hypothetical. They already knew that this person was a threat. And now, remarkably, he somehow was allowed to buy a gun, but yet putting him on another list is going to be this remarkable uh, boon. It doesn't say how, but it's you know you're supposed to be in favor of it, like a good liberal. 
And uh, that brings us into what I know a lot of you are waiting for, the Brexit update. Uh, this is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel, as you can see right there. Uh, when you stay at the Seacrest, which you're going to do if you stay at Cedar Point, it's real easy. Do you want to spend a minimum of $120 at the Breakers, or would you like to spend what is always, uh, I've never seen it more than 80 at the Seacrest. Now, if it's 81, don't hit unsubscribe or something dickish, but you know what I mean. It's really cheap there, and you're going to have a good bed and a good bath, and tell them you heard about it from the correct views, and you're going to get even more of a discount. Here's your Brexit news, friends. Uh, let's go on screen share, of course. I want to show you that uh, I said that gold would flux. Uh, it went up $61. It's down 10 That means uh, it's still up $51 when I went to school. Also, um, I, I've told people to buy it. I never said when you should sell. It depends on why you're buying it. The point is I nailed this one. Uh, silver's down $0.12, cents, but it went up $0.48. Cents, so it went up. Platinum is up $2.25 as markets open now in Japan. So platinum is going up, 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 up. And uh, things are pretty bit uh, titty bit nipply elsewhere. David Cameron rolls out a second EU referendum under the Brexit, which is good because if the other side had lost, you could probably, you know, do you think he'd have went over, bent over backwards to make sure that there was a second referendum for Brexit? No. So why should the other side do it? Um, and there are things more important than the economy. I think that the economy is going to be short-term bad for Britain, long-term good. And for those of you who have bought gold, as we have said forever on this show to do, you've already had a huge win, and right now you're singing praises. And I like praises, so keep doing it. I heard praises. David Cameron has rolled out a second referendum on Britain's EU membership. The Prime Minister, who is, of course, a pig drinker, if you don't believe me, look up Prime Minister David Cameron, pig sex. You'll find that I'm not making it up. The Prime Minister spokesperson said that holding another vote was not remotely on the cards. The clarification comes amid a petition calling for a rerun in the, re the result of a close uh, election. Basically, the youth... Uh, which I don't know when this happened. When did it become popular for the youth to not be rebellious, but to side with the elitists and the queen? The Ramones are turning over in their grave. Um, how did this happen? Where, where is common sense here? They're leaving the European Union, not because they're worried about the economy, but because you're allowing unvetted Muslims to rape the nation. Because you're refusing to allow sovereignty to the nations. England's not even allowed to set its own laws apart from the EU. That's exactly why this happened. So I'm glad that uh, Pig Doinker is on the right side of history here. Because, no, we don't need a second vote. We need to get the, uh, the British people out of the EU like they voted. Um, well, Obama barely won, so maybe we should give him a re-election. You never hear that because it doesn't happen. Independent.co.uk Brexit loophole. This is bad news. MPs must still vote in order for Britain to leave the EU. And this is according to top lawyers. This is not good. Uh, Parliament must still vote on a bill to allow the UK to leave the European Union. Leading for lawyers who have said Jeffrey Robertson of QC, who founded Doherty Street, uh, Chambers said the act which set up the referendum is nothing about its impact, meaning it was purely advi advisory. Uh, the new bill to repeal the 1972 European Communities Act that took Britain into the EU must now be passed by Parliament, he said, adding that MPs might not be able to vote until November. <laughs> what they're saying is they're looking for ways to completely override the vote of the people. They're looking for ways to steal the Brexit from the people against the will of the people and tell you that what you want doesn't matter. And they're saying that they can do this because they're allowed to do what they feel is best. Well, I was under the impression that in democracies and republics that the people decided such things, not the MPs. So this is just one of the ways that they're trying to steal it from you. We've got more Brexit news on the way. I brought to you, as you see on screen share by Sticker Junkie. Go there, get your stickers, and on checkout, type in correct views or the correct views and save even more than you already did on the best stickers that you've already seen. Labor MP demands Parliament ignore the madness of the Brexit vote. In other words, you know, 
you might elect Donald Trump, you might, God forbid, elect Hillary Clinton, we just override the vote, right? Well, that's the equivalent of what England is saying here. Um, if you're in favor of this, then I'm sorry, you're a fascist. Uh, welcome to the show, you're a dick. Uh, a British opposition lawmaker says Parliament should stop the madness, land overturn, and the result of a referendum calling for the Britain to leave the EU, which helped all gold investors, including Soros. How many of you lefties hate Soros? Well, guess what? He made a fortune screwing you over. Labor legislator David Lammy says Thursday's national vote was non-binding and our sovereign parliament needs to now vote on whether to quit the EU. No, 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 don't do that. He says some Leave supporters now regret their votes and parliament should vote on Britain's EU membership. He said we can stop this madness and bring the nightmare to an end. Let us not destroy our economy based on hubris. They didn't just do this because of the economy. They did a lot of this because they do not want other cultures overriding the British culture. They're simply not compatible. They're not coming into the country to be British. They're coming into the country in large numbers and oftentimes to destroy Britain. Plus, there's not the infrastructure to take in a bunch of people when you don't know who they are. He says that Lee's supporters now regret their votes, and that's not true at all. They're trying very, very hard to skew this in a way that makes it look like this was some kind of an accident. This was not an accident, friends. It was done on purpose, and it's the elite trying to trump the vote of the common man. So, I mean, keep an eye on it. Don't let it happen. Moving on with Brexit news. Before we get to the dumb of the day, this is RT.com. A Scottish leader could ask local parliament to block the UK exit from the EU. Again, block the people's vote. Stop the people's vote. Tell the people their vote is wrong. They've made computer programs. Uh, they're called bots that are signing people up for a second referendum vote that live as far away as North Korea. Yeah, we all know how amazingly diplomatic North Korea is. Look it up if you don't believe me. Um, post-Brexit world, um, thank God this happened, but they're trying to stop it, as I'm reporting on here diligently. Speaking to the BBC, Sturgeon said that we should make no qualms asking Parliament to veto legislation that would see the UK exit the EU, and of course override the people. The Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, says she may ask the Scottish Parliament to block the EU's exit. If the Scottish Parliament was judging this on the basis of what's right for Scotland, then the option of saying, look, we're not vote for something that's against Scotland's interest. That's because Scotland doesn't give anything to the world except heroin addicts and a welfare state. They have failed so long ago so badly, and the EU has hurt them so deeply that they can't live without the corrupt funds, which are consistently coming from the EU. Um, that's, that's just common sense there. They want to be a part of it because they have absolutely no earthly idea what they do, what to do if they don't remain a part of it. And uh, that, friends, brings us to the dumb D of the day. I got a computer freeze here, but it's fine because you'll be able to look it up on low information voter turnout here. Um, I don't know why, but I have like no bandwidth. The uh, you'll find here on low information uh, video Brexit will come right up. You'll have a good look at exactly what the problem looks like and why it looks like this. Because what you're seeing here is an idiot. Okay, basically, someone called her Eliza Doolittle, which is something that I could agree with. You've got people here that have no idea what the European Union was. And all they know is that it was a way to give them something for free or something for less work. And rather than absolutely looking at the problems that are inherent in this, the goal here seems to be rather to just deny, override the people, stop the people's vote, all of that. And this idiot here, as you can see in the video, can't even name even one thing about the EU that's actually helpful to anyone. That's because she has absolutely no idea. The comment line, a gentleman on InfoWars and Prison Planet called her Eliza Doolittle, which was the, the best analogy I think I've ever heard regarding it. And my point here is this, friends. 